back home to the Kenyan Premier League where the debate on whether to expand the Kenyan Premier League to have 18 teams or retain 16 was finally put to rest on Thursday when the Sports Dispute Tribunal broke out a deal between Football Kenya Federation and the Kenyan Premier League. As a result, the top tier league will have 18 teams. According to John O'Haga, who chairs the tribunal, the two parties agreed to expand the league and FKF and KPL have now retreated to discuss how to bridge the 36 million deficit required to run an expanded league. Elsewhere, Sofa Parker, Moroni Youth and Thika United will know their fate this week, whether they will take part in the Kenyan Premier League. Uh, the three clubs were relegated for, uh, for failing to get a club licensing certificate. KPL is expected to release the 2017 season fixtures once the fate of the three clubs is determined. In the studio, to give us their final word on the expanded league and how KPL teams are preparing for the new season, are Seth Onserio, a commentator at Kwetu Radio, as well as uh, a reporter of uh, the People Daily, Ken Nato. Guys, welcome to our studios. Thank you. Yes, Thanks. Ken. Yes. How was your weekend? Uh, uh, the weekend was okay. Yes. Can't complain. Uh -huh. yeah. You are watching the Afri African Cup of Nations, of course. Yeah, of course. Mm. Yeah, that's now the big thing mm. in the continent. So that's where our sites mm -hmm. are. The, the, the big news is that uh, all the favorite teams, uh, those that had been tagged as favorite, uh, are packing. They are going home. Ka Cameroon sending uh, Senegal packing. Uh, did you see that coming, Seth? Actually, I was disappointed. I don't know what is happening with uh, Liverpool from England to the AFCON. Mm -hmm. yeah. You, you saw because Liverpool at AFCON? Yes, I saw Liverpool at <laughs> AFCON. I mean, I did yeah. not expect uh, Mane. Okay, we've seen stars missing penalties, mm -hmm. uh, but I did not expect Mane to miss that one. And uh, Senegal, as you said, I never gave uh, Cameroon a chance. Mm -hmm. Senegal have been playing well all the way from group stages. Uh, I've seen that unison. Uh, the football has been flawless. Mm -hmm. Actually, it was disappointing to mm -hmm. see them getting knocked out. Mm -hmm. Did it uh, shock you that Senegal were eliminated, Ken? Yeah, indeed. I was shocked. Mm -hmm. But um, as, uh, apart from getting shocked, mm -hmm. there's one thing like I looked and when you look at the, from the group stages, yes. it became unpredictable. The mm -hmm. results, the big boys, you see mm -hmm. the way they were doing, they were drawing or they were being beaten. Yes. So to me, this is an indication by saying eh, mm -hmm. Africa's best, all these teams that were there proved mm -hmm. to be Africa's best, they were not there by chance mm -hmm. or fluke. Mm -hmm. So the thing is that now, and uh, it's bringing now a new dawn whereby mm -hmm. There are no big boys. Yes. They're all equals. Yeah, because uh, reading uh, Bobby Williamson's uh, column last week, he said that uh, uh, this African Cup of Nations will see a team at least go home with something. And we saw Uganda uh, returning to the AFCON after 39 years, you know, holding uh, the, the big teams, you know, to draws and uh, get going home with two points. Yeah, first, uh, I think Uganda did quite well. Mm. And... Uh, Surprise package for me uh, is booking a first. So again, time and again, surprise they're package. They reached the finals in two Yes, exactly. Yeah. What I mean is, time and again, they are proving that it was not a fluke uh -huh. last time. Uh -huh. Yeah, look at even the way they played against uh, Tunisia. Mm -hmm. You can see that it is a team which is developing, a team exactly. which is heading somewhere. Mm -hmm. I think, but uh, I was impressed by the goalkeeper Kofi. Uh, of Burkina Faso because I thought uh, so far he's put in a very good performance. Here's the main reason. You know, as a goalkeeper, first of all, you have to ensure that uh, your defense understands each other. You're behind them. You're the one who knows them. You're the one who's reading the game. Mm. And as a goalkeeper, if you just let it fall apart, mm. that is how you'll concede. That's how you'll get eliminated. So it's good for a goalkeeper to, for example, take, take an example of Hadari mm -hmm. or of Egypt. Mm -hmm. That guy at is 44 years. years. Yes, at 44. And uh, you could see even uh, the way they played yesterday against Morocco. No, he commands his line well. Once you do that as a goalkeeper, mm. you know, your team will... Uh, mm, exactly. Uh, the Leopards of Congo yesterday losing 2-1 to Ghana. Uh, two brilliant goals from Abedi Pele's son, Jordan and uh, Andre. Are you, uh, how, what did you make of that game, uh, Nato? Uh, well, uh, that, that match, I can say, for mm. one, mm. it was balanced, mm. but... It was only an, okay, any team would have won. Mm. Whichever team would have won would have deserved because they put on, uh, they put their best. Mm. 
but from, from, from your body language, it looks like all your teams, uh, the ones you expected to, to be now in the tournament, have, go, have gone home. Are you feeling really that uh, maybe, like you said, that gap has really, uh, really closed between the big boys and the small boys? But then four teams in the semifinals, Cameroon versus Senegal uh, coming up, and Egypt versus Burkina Faso. Where do you see, or who do you see in the final, Nato? Uh, it's not Burkina Faso. It's Burkina Faso it, no, no. versus it's, Egypt. It's, it's yeah. Ghana. Yeah. It's it's Ghana mm -hmm. uh, versus Cameroon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the finals. Okay, for on this other side, Ghana. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing them beating Cameroon. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the other side. I'm still seeing Burkina Faso pulling a surprise. Mm -hmm. I, I beg to differ so? with oh. uh, Ghana yeah. defeating Cameroon. You see. Ghana is talented. Yeah. It has talented players as compared to Cameroon. But uh, there is that work rate which I've seen in the indomitable Lions. Mm. You know, uh, currently they tend uh, not to have the so called big names right now, yeah. the indomitable yeah. Lions. Mm. But if you look at the work rate, the way they are playing, uh, if you look at the way from the defense, uh, from the goalkeeper to the defense to the midfield sure. to the striking department, mm -hmm. I think that is uh, one thing which will work out for them. Mm -hmm. Ghana, until now, I can say that they are uh, fortunate mm -hmm. to be where they are. Because but I feel I thought last night's game uh, showed, you know, brought the best out of them. Yes, it did. But it's because of that reckless challenge by, mm -hmm. uh, I've forgotten the defense. Kamananga? Name. That was Kamananga? Or, or no, it wasn't Kabananga. Mm. I remember the, it was yeah. that left-back uh, thing. Mm. I've forgotten them. It was because of that reckless ch challenge. Actually, that match was headed really. to the uh, extra time and uh, penalties eventually. Mm. Uh, if you could see, there is that... Um, how can I put it? Uh, there is some kind of confusion in the midfield. Those guys mm. tend to play as if they don't know each other. They're into so much pressure. Mm. They, when they're, they're with the ball, uh, first of all, you, they're like... They don't know what to do with that what ball. To do with that yes, ball. exactly. So they've got to look for Andre Ayue. Is so it was he, quite yeah. unfortunate to see mm. uh, Congo getting knocked. But uh, of course, again, winning without uh, Samoa Jan would give uh, uh, Ghana that big boost. But of course, again, like you talked about the unity within the Cameroon ranks. You remember their two players, their big name players, refused to play for them: mm -hmm. Chupo Moting and uh, uh, there was also um, uh, Matip. So I think. Uh, I don't know if that is galvanizing the Cameroonians you to say when, we can uh, do this, it. Uh, when uh, the Black Stars uh, had Anan there and up here, that midfield was compact. Mm. When the ball was there, you knew that something will come. Will come. You knew that some, something will be created. Mm. Uh, but right now, unfortunately... Mm. Let's, let's, let's move on now to the Kenyan Premier League, uh, NATO. And uh, there's been a debate, this debate has really dragged on for so many months, since last year, about uh, expanding the league to 18 teams, some saying it should remain at 16, but uh, thankfully the, it has been resolved. Uh, the Kenya Premier League will have 18 teams. Is it good news or bad news, Ken? It's good news. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I don't see any problem with 18 teams, because I remember in the Easter years, yeah. when I was still a boy, mm -hmm. the team, uh, the league was even is over 20 teams, mm -hmm. whereby teams were playing uh, about two matches in a week. Mm -hmm. You'll find that one match is being played like on Wednesday, another one on Saturday, others were playing Saturday and Sunday. But when you look at, uh, at around that time, mm. Kenya was performing very well at national team level. Mm. But you see, when you look at uh, when uh, it came down to 16, and when you try to compare mm. maybe what we achieved around that time, you'll find that even when uh, Gormahia won mm -hmm. that, uh, the Mandela Cup, mm. when you look at when Kenya won Eastern Central three yes, times, yes. No. And, and then you look at, at one time FC Leopards reached the semis, mm. semis. Yeah, the semis of the uh, Africa Cup, Af Minas Cup. Uh, yeah. Africa Cup, yeah. Minas Cup. We'll, come, we'll come to that. Uh, the, maybe you give us maybe some scientific backup to what you say, uh, why you are saying that uh, uh, to have more teams will uh, enable mm. the, 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 mm. the players to perform to the highest level. But then, what did you make of uh, the fact that the team is now expanded to 18? Uh, to me, uh, I felt it was uh, first an, an issue looking uh, from uh, uh, the last FKF, the last FKF and the current one, 
uh, versus the KPL. Mm -hmm. uh, it was about uh, two bodies trying to show uh, which one has more muscle yeah. than the other. Mm -hmm. uh, looking at 18 teams, to me it's a plus. Uh, these are more 60. Uh, these are 60 players we have mm -hmm. right now. More 60 players uh, in the Kenya Premier League brought to the exposure, and it means that. Uh, out of these 60 players, at least yeah. we'll have two or three who will make it to the national team mm -hmm. and it will make it competitive. Uh, because looking at these two clubs which have been promoted, yes. to me, it will increase some level of competition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so to me, it wasn't about 16, it wasn't about 18, but it's a plus. Yeah, I because, uh, no because the, the argument has been that the league begins um, in February and ends just early November. And then from November all the way to again, February, the players are not uh, engaged. And then when the African uh, club championship uh, come along, the Kenyan teams are not prepared. I don't know uh, scientifically if you have any backing, uh, uh, NATO, uh, how important is it for players to play more matches in a week in their uh, preparations? Yeah, scientifically, I think it, it makes them to be active. Mm -hmm. You see, it's just like now you enter into a pitch mm -hmm. of competition and you've not warmed up. Yes. So you'll find that uh, by February, these players tend to be rusty. Yeah. They are from a uh, festive season. Mm -hmm. Again, they've partied, they've done whatever they've done. So mm -hmm. you find that by the time they come and they start picking up, yes. you know, you, you find that uh, they're not, by the time they're picking up, that maybe there are rivals from other countries mm. already, their leagues are already ongoing. Mm. Because they, they talk about uh, the calendar, uh, that it, uh, the, 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 the Kenyan calendar disadvantages the Kenyan clubs. In other countries, the calendar starts from May, uh, sorry, from August and then ends in May. That was a Is talk. it a factor? Yeah, it was a, it was a talk uh, a, few, a few months ago, mm. I think last year, mm. uh, the, uh, by there were plans uh, to change the Kenyan calendar yeah, so as to merge with uh, the others. And uh, looking at what uh, Nato said, that is a factor of Toskin. Looking at these players, when they've gone out there, you know, they tend to relax. But when the league is competitive, a player knows that he has to be fit. Mm. Yeah, and uh, looking at the way they play also, it makes them to be that competitive. Mm. For example, talk about uh, Task FC right now. Talk of Fulinzi. Yes. Look at the players. Uh, right now, what are they doing? I mean, look even at uh, the preseason yeah. matches they are playing. Mm. You see, uh, Tasca is playing uh, the likes of, okay, don't say, uh, no pun intended, mm. uh, playing the likes of Palos. Mm. Is Palos what you are expecting yeah, in the Champions League? Uh, and then look at uh, their opponents from Sudan. Uh, they invited Gormaya. They've gone, uh, they've uh, played high profile friendly matches. Exactly. And then Tasca is going up uh, playing the likes of Shamberere FC. I mean, <laughs> that will not add value. Yeah, because I saw the other day in Zambia, uh, Zanaco FC, which is also preparing for, for, for the kickoff of the season and playing Continental, they invited the likes of uh, TP Mazembe, the, the, the big clubs like Sundowns, who are the African champions. And uh, you don't see that in, with Kenyan clubs. That has clubs. been a very, uh, it has been our main undoing. Mm. Goldmeyer tried uh, last season, even if uh, they were eliminated. Yes, you could see they lined up uh, big profile friendlies, mm -hmm. at least they had something. But our preparations right now, and as, as you said about the calendar and everything, mm -hmm. it is something we should Is, is it a lack of ambition, Ken? Is it that our clubs lack that ambition and therefore they're just content to play with, uh, uh, you know, small time friendlies in preparation? Uh, they, uh, I cannot say that they lack ambition. Mm -hmm. You know, there's also another thing also, which may be some of these clubs mm -hmm. are not or, the, or rather the officials are mm. not putting into cognizance. They're not looking at, you know, like if you want some good results in yes. anything, even if it's a business, you have to invest. Exactly. So for them, they are looking at the financial part. Mm. You see, they would rather maybe travel to Kisumu, mm -hmm. play Palos, other than going to Uganda mm -hmm. or inviting a team from uh, Tanzania mm -hmm. to come and play us. So mm. I think it's a matter of uh, priorities. Mm. That's what I can say. Yeah, one would say, therefore, then that uh, uh, these club officials do not really push themselves to the limit to to get the kind of financing that would help these clubs, you know, participate in all these uh, matches. It's not a, a matter of financing, uh, Robin Toskin. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, I think first from the management, we have had our priorities wrong. Mm -hmm. um, 
when you, uh, when for example you elect a politician to run a club, yes, yes. you will not expect uh, this guy to move the club forward. Mm -hmm. He has his own interests. And uh, looking at uh, the chairman we have at these clubs, for example, mm -hmm. if a serious chairman will just sit, will know that my team has qualified for this tournament. Yeah. Let me have a specific plan. Let me present this to the man uh, to the man to the top management. Yeah. Let me get my things online, and then by the time the season starts, everything will be in place. Now, unfortunately, I want to see. Uh, my problem will be what will Seth get from this. What yeah. will Tosin get from this? <laughs> what will Nato get from this? Yeah. And that is why, even talk of signs, uh, signings right now. Mm. Okay, uh, looking at the signings even uh, Tasca have made, mm. uh, bringing in and, uh, Victor Ndinya, bringing him uh, in uh, Vincent Omumbo. Yeah. Are these the players who will help this club perform well in the mm. CAF Champions League? Mm. Talk of that midfield of, uh, of uh, Shane Sempala, mm -hmm. uh, Amfre Mieno. Are these the players who will take this club yeah. Past the first round. Mm. So I think, first of all, it starts from up there. You elect somebody who does not, who does not have that interest for this. Uh, but but for the, uh, for the, when for you the talk about elections, players, maybe you, you'll be narrowing down to two clubs only, which are notorious with their elections, AFC Leopards and uh, Gormaya. But Tasca, Tasca, we haven't seen them go into elections. This is a corporate entity that ought to be leading, you know, uh, from, the, from the front uh, on... Uh, the best practice of recruiting a team. But um, from whatever you are saying, it looks like they have not done that. I don't know, uh, Ken, in, in preparing a, a team for a high profile league like the Kenya Premier League, do you think the clubs are getting the basics right? Yeah, uh, in fact, uh, just even answering you and adding on what he's saying about yes. management, mm -hmm. you know, basically, you have to, uh, if you are to have, uh, it starts with, with the leaders, the leadership. So, like, uh, let me give an example, and I can say a very good example, Ambrose Rachia. Yeah. You see, he's gone out of his way to look for other ways and means mm. of fundraising for the team, other than depending on uh, money from officials or maybe well wishers. Mm. So you find that they are able to get money from different sources. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, secondly, you look at, let's say, like Tasca. Like in South Africa, there's this team called Supersport, yeah. which I know is being sponsored by Supersport. Mm -hmm. But when you look, they have shared sponsors. Who are, is it Engine? Mm -hmm. You see? So a team like Tasca, or these teams which are also sponsored by corporates, mm -hmm. what they should do, they should also go out of their way and also do it. Maybe, let's say, Tasca can uh, have the brand, the name, mm -hmm. and then look for another, for a short sponsor, mm -hmm. so that they can get more money. Mm -hmm. Through this money, they can be able to buy good players. I think Ulinze stars are uh, leading the way on this part. Yeah. We know that uh, yeah, like it's a military even, side, but of course, again, they have uh, their sponsors. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, something like, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, something like that. So that you can be able to get money, good money, to get good players, who can be able to stand or to compete. You, you mentioned about uh, preparations uh, and the signing of players. Uh, I don't know from uh, the activity, transfer activity, uh, what's going on? Which team is doing good business at the moment, would you say? Well, um, right now I'll talk of uh, AFC Leopards. Yep. First of all, I've uh, been impressed with the kind of the targets, uh, the players they have acquired. Mm -hmm. uh, talking of, uh, for example, the defense uh, bringing in uh, Robinson Kamura. Kamura has been good. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw last season what uh, he attained while at Madara United. And talking of also uh, of the midfield, uh, midfield uh, duo of uh, Vonny Souza, mm -hmm. Vonny Souza and uh, a uh, former Post Rangers guy, Duncan Otieno. Mm -hmm. I think these two uh, guys, if they find the, their chemistry right, uh, it will be good for FC Leopards. Though I'm a bit worried uh, about their offensive department. Mm. Yeah, to me, I think they needed there to. Because uh, Alfred Rekesa is injured, I'm told he uh, will be out for almost three months. Exactly. And then the league would have begun. Uh, they still have Kiongera in that uh, attack. They, 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 they shook off uh, Kefa Swani. Yeah. I, I don't know from uh, your coverage of these teams, Ken, uh, how is it now at FC Leopards? Because 
it's one of the most active clubs in the transfer market. Every time the window <laughs> opens, now we are told they've signed 10 players. Where did the others go? And is it a good move? Yeah, it's a good move. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the only problem is yeah. with AFC, they usually make even good signings mm -hmm. than other teams. But uh, I think what is ailing or what is uh, ailing at the den mm -hmm. are those internal wrangles. Mm -hmm. They're the only things which uh, affect AFC. But we'll say that the, 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 the maybe if I may cut you short, yeah, if yeah. I may cut you short, yeah. there's something Stuart Hall said. As Stuart Hall said, go to young, ambitious players. Mm -hmm. Well, because Seth will play knowing that this is my target is to play somewhere abroad. Mm -hmm. My target is to play in Spain. My target is to play in Turkey. Mm -hmm. But when you go to, uh, for someone who's 30 years, mm -hmm. yeah, this is someone who is now interested in, uh, in getting good money. Yes. Someone who is now focused, more focused on his future. That is, because he's, uh, uh, because looking at, looking at him, he has a few years, let's say two, three years to sure. play. Mm -hmm. So, but once you go for these young players, they will work extra hard, hard for mm -hmm. the team. Mm -hmm. First of all, they'll be looking at their careers, knowing that if I give my best here, somebody will recognize, probably somebody will see me out there. Mm -hmm. And as a result, the club will do perfectly Th well. That's, that's a perfect, uh, when you've mentioned Stuart Hall, uh, a reputable coach for AFC Leopards. But about his independence, do you think uh, Nato, uh, Stuart Hall will have the space and the independence to make the kind of decisions we've seen him uh, make elsewhere? Uh, I still doubt mm. at AFC, mm. those internal wrangles, interference. Yeah. Uh, but okay. looking at that technical bench, I, I don't think uh, we should uh, see problems with that because he's come in, introduced very new guys, except for only Tony Lidon, the former player of FC Leopards with the manager. Do you foresee, because problems have always started with that uh, within the technical bench, do you foresee problems at that club? No, okay. If we go by the technical bench, because mm -hmm. I think Stuart Hall was given a free hand mm -hmm. on his technical bench. Uh, if they're given the free hand, no interference, mm -hmm. Uh, given the experience that Stuart Hall has, mm. he can take Ingwe places. L let's look at Gormaya. Uh, they underperformed according to their fans last season. And uh, the coach, uh, Marcelo, has been under pressure from a section of fans saying that uh, they can, Gore cannot win anything with uh, Marcelo. But then they have made really impressive signings. The other day they unveiled 14 players. Do you think uh, Gormaya... Uh, facing the, uh, the, the right direction. Uh, Gurmai has a good squad, and uh, you talked of uh, uh, Maria. Mm. Yeah, Zimaria. Zimaria. Yeah, Zimaria. And looking at Zimaria, I don't think, I don't think he has really gotten it right mm. at Gurmai here. Mm. Looking from where Natal left the team, yeah, and the current Gurmai here, looking at the way they struggled in matches which they could have won with best players on the pitch, I think there is a, a problem. And also something which uh, I don't know whether I'm the only one seeing this. Uh, when uh, Khalid Aucho left, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I expected Gorma here to go into the market, venture into market, and find a good midfielder who will replace him. Mm -hmm. But right until now, they are tending to rely on uh, uh, Gattuso, Collins mm -hmm. Okoth. Mm -hmm. And Gattuso, the only problem with him, even if he's good, still his discipline is wanting. Mm. So, if this Gattuso will not give you what you want, mm. who will replace him there in the middle? Mm. So, I think they could have gone there. Yes, they have made good signings. Mm. Uh, Jean Baptiste is good. Uh, looking at, uh, okay, uh, I'll not mention all the names of the 13 players, but they have yeah. made good signings. Mm. However, they still have that gap to fill mm. in the midfield. The fact that uh, Marcelo, the left back, exactly. uh, again, uh, yeah, point. has left the club, Omar, is, will that affect Urmaya, left back? Marcelo played for only six months for Gormaya, only yeah. for, for only six months. Yeah. But the market left what he did for Gormaya. Yes. Made people believe that this guy has been here for, for long, I think. That's a gap which I don't know will be uh, filled to this season. Mm. Uh, just uh, because we don't have much time, but then let's la look at the three clubs that were uh, in quotes relegated by FKF for failing to, to get the, the licensing certificates. That is Thika United, Moroni, and uh, Sofa Parker. How are they preparing for the season? Because uh, the sports uh, dispute tribunal could even rule that they are back in the league. Are, are they preparing? Are they signing players 
from your, what you, you, are, you are gathering out there in the field? Uh, I've not gathered anything mm. about them signing uh, any new players, but uh, I think that, uh, okay, like the other day, uh, Morioki mm -hmm. of Thika, Thika yeah. he said that uh, uh, they had rectified mm -hmm. uh, what uh, went wrong. So I believe it's only that since they, uh, they're out mm -hmm. as the media, We've not taken that role mm -hmm. to look into their uh, preparedness yeah, yeah. and all the that. The other day so they played against Gormaya at Camp Tayo. Yeah, yeah I, think, I, think, I think it's done well. Uh, yeah. They have uh, signed, I think, uh, six uh, players from the NSL. I was talking to Adagala. Adagala is saying that he has signed nine players. Now my question is, will these nine players replace uh, Luamba Bebeto? Mm. Will they uh, replace uh, Francis Ochola? What about uh, this guy Farouk Shikalo? Mm. I think they'll struggle. Talk of Sofa Parker. Sofa Parker actually is a patient who is waiting to die in the <laughs> hospital, unfortunately. No, no, but they've given themselves a chance because last they season given themselves nobody chance, thought yes. they could but survive right now, their relegation. What are they doing, Robin Toskin? Yeah. Nothing. Zero. Or have you heard Sofa mm. Parker doing anything right now? Yeah, they've been very quiet exactly. in the transfer uh, market. Point. But uh, maybe they've re re retained most of the players that uh, help them survive relegation. Uh, people like, like, like most, uh, most players who were signed by Sofa Parker uh, mm -hmm. last season and in the last six months, they were given a six month contract, mm -hmm. most of them. Right now, like no be sure, no Beach will Noah Beach has left. Yeah. We have uh, Moses Dube. Moses yeah. Dube, I'm not expecting to return to mm -hmm. Sofa Parker mm -hmm. and some other players also. Uh, you know how Kenyan transfer window is. Just wait until the last minute. That's when you say, oh, Sofa Parker lost this, this this and that uh, player. Right now, there's nothing which is... And actually, that club. transfer window should be closed. Yeah, the, the club has breached the contract. Players mm. are free to leave mm -hmm. yeah, as they please. Mm -hmm. So, actually, in Swahili, they say Utashtuka, mm -hmm. when you realize that most of those <laughs> players... <laughs> and, and finally, the 36 million uh, shillings that FKF and KPL uh, need to get to bridge that gap. Do you think uh, this, uh, these guys can get that kind of money for the league? Yeah. Not I yeah. think I think they'll get yeah, it. Yeah, because uh, the, the other day we told we were told that Sportpesa have come in to support the federation, and KPL said that FKF must get the 36 because you wanted 18 teams, then get us 36 million shillings. Do you think they can get that? I mean, I've been talking. I told you money was not the problem here. Mm. What was the problem? The problem if it was all about money, yeah. actually, even Sportpesa could have come mm -hmm. and said it's A B C D. Even. Supersport could have said it is ABCD. Mm. There is money. It was just about uh, chest thumping there. Mm. That was because telling me about uh, 36 million. Mm. First, Toskin, this guy is the KPL. Okay, uh, I don't want to be uh, misquoted or, or taken badly by the KPL, but sometimes I tend to speak the, the, to mm. speak the truth. If it was all about mm. money, first of all, why did they not reveal the mm. amount which was given by Sport Pesa? Mm. Mm. Why? Yeah, those this, this have been the issues because uh, nobody right now knows how much uh, the, the deal was uh, worth uh, between the exactly. Premier League and Robin and Soskin, yeah. will you tell me that uh, adding two teams, does it mean that every yeah. team will yeah. cost 18 million? Does it mean that <laughs> every fixture, yeah. how, can, how can I put NATO? Mm. Every fixture, um, that's, uh, how many, we have how many match days? 30 match days. Uh, yes. Yes, 30 match days. Does it mean that to organize a single match in Kenyan Premier League, if you combine the two teams, takes one million. It, it, it's actually a, a, it a, matter of, a matter of debate and uh, uh, we hope that the two, FKF and KPL, will come up with the right way of raising the 36 million shillings. We've been uh, talking about sports, a review of uh, uh, the uh, stories making the headlines with uh, Ken Nato, uh, a reporter with the People uh, Daily, and also very experienced uh, that. And we also had Seth Onsiri, who is a uh, commentator with the to Radio. Uh, that has been sports, talking about football, football. Mm -hmm. We eat and uh, sleep football. Sleep Are you football. watching the I know you do. I, I, know, I, I, I did until Gabon actually you know, got out of the league and that was it for me. Uh -huh. But uh, yeah, it's an interesting cup going on. Uh, we're hoping for the uh, winner. Uh, uh, there are still so many matches, four matches. Four matches to go. Have time to, uh -huh. to watch the semi-finals coming up. Uh -huh. Cameroon, Senegal. I'll be supporting the winner. I'm, I'm biased like you, that. You Whoever make, uh, wins is what <laughs> I'm supporting. <laughs> All right, yeah. and uh, that conversation on a sports chat with Robin Toskin brings us to a close here on a Morning Express. Thank you so much for staying with us. My name is Michelle Ngere. I'll be back at the top of the hour with Worldview.